Welcome to another episode of the Inspirational Power Hour podcast. I'm your host, Chandra Wise. This is a platform for anyone who loves gospel music. We celebrate the genre by highlighting the artists that create it. We go behind the music. We talk with songwriters, producers, and the community that loves and supports gospel music. You'll also hear from people and you'll hear stories that will encourage and uplift you. This week, I'm talking to gospel recording artist, Christina Bell. Christina is one of the actresses in the upcoming Lifetime biopic about the legendary Clark sisters, airing on Saturday, April the 11th. Christina got her start in a female gospel group out of Shreveport, Louisiana, called Zyel, and later launched her own solo career with her debut single, Going. So let's check out this week's interview with Christina Bell. It's the inspirational... Power, power. Hey guys, you are listening to the Inspirational Power Hour. Now, I know we've been seeing for months all of the promos, all of the posts about the upcoming film about the legendary Clark sisters. And in that film are some incredibly talented, not just actors, but also artists, singers. And today I have the pleasure of talking to an uh, an amazing vocalist, amazing singer, friend of the show, also one of the stars of the film, none other than Miss Christina. How are you, ma'am? Hey, Sandra, how are you? I'm great. I'm great. How are you? I'm great. Listen, thanks so much for hanging out and for talking with us today. So excited about this upcoming movie. So let's jump right into it. Let's talk about how you got the part of Twinkie Clark in the Clark Sisters biopic. How did the how did this casting happen? Cool deal. So my management, uh, I have a team of two managers, and uh, they saw a, uh, a post from Donald Lawrence. He wasn't supposed to post it, but uh, he posted that um, they were looking for the the sisters, the actors for the Clark Sisters movie, and they still at the time hadn't found Denise or found Twinkie. And so my management was like, team, you have, they called me team. They were like, team, you have to audition for this. And of course I was, I was nervous. The only thing that I've actually done as far as acting is concerned is plays. And so I've, I've, I've been comfortable with doing plays, you know, staying in my lane and knowing all along that uh, doing movies and filming and all that good stuff is totally different from doing a play. It's completely different from doing a play. So they had to talk me into doing it. And so they finally talked me into doing it. I went ahead and did my audition, sent in uh, three audition tapes, and probably within the le- uh, less than 24 hours, we received a phone call back from production, and they were like, you are Twinkie. <laughs> Can you be in Canada in two weeks? And I was like, uh, yeah. <laughs> so that was that was the process of it. So shout out to Donald Lawrence for posting, even though he wasn't supposed to. <laughs> So when you look at your castmates for this film, I love the fact that they were intentional in choosing actresses that not only looked the part, but those that also had strong musical abilities. Now, could all of the cast sing? Now, I know several of the ladies are singers, uh, but can all of the cast sing? So everybody can sing, but the only uh, singers that participated in the singing parts were uh, myself, Shalea, Kiara, and Angela. Even though Raven can sing, she was like, acting is my thing. So I'll stick to the acting part. So we we, we carried the, um, well, actually, Kiara actually carried Denise's part for the, for the movie, but she played it well. Raven played it so very well. Now, can we talk about the casting of Kiara Kiki Sheard as her mother, Karen Clark Sheard? How amazing is that? Absolutely amazing. I remember one night she and I were sitting up talking and I said, so you, you know, you grew up with your mom and, you know, you listen to your mom all the time. And she said, you know, I know that people might think, you know, I always pay attention to exactly how she sings and stuff. And she said, but what I did when I came here was I, I started making sure that because we, we didn't start filming until like a week or maybe two after we had gotten there. But what she did each night was make sure that she put her mom in her ears. She went to bed listening to her mom's albums and listening to the the old Clark sisters songs. And she wanted to make sure that she had it down pat. So 
I was even blown away. I was like, what? Really? She was like, yeah, because I wanted to make sure that I, I portrayed my mom with her, her singing uh, vocal ability to the T. And she did just that, along with the help of none other than the Donald Lawrence. And he helped us all to, to actually, you know, get the sound of the Clark sisters out. But she was phenomenal. Even the acting was phenomenal. She told me one time, she was like, you know, it's so surreal to actually live what my mom had to go through when she was younger. And sometimes some of the stuff that I'm having to do is, is pretty scary. She said, some of this stuff I didn't even know, like they didn't even share it with me. I was like, what? <laughs> but it was really incredible to, to know that, you know, it's certain things that she really was not aware of, but it was incredible that she, she said that she could actually get this out and focus on what her mom did. She would call her mom all of the time and say, mom, would you, do you think that you, I should do it like this or this? And I was like, really? She was like, yeah. So it was really cool to find out that information. And you know, one of the things that I love about this project is that I think it's a passion project for Donna Lawrence, who of course is, I believe the musical director. He's always been so vocal about his love for the Clark sisters, for Karen, for their legacy and that family. And if anybody will handle this music with the care and integrity musically that it deserves, it's nobody but Donald. Yeah, Donald said that he is a fanatic and... <laughs> And he said he is not afraid to say that he's a Clark sister fanatic. He's been listening to him since he was, you know, younger. And it was amazing that he listened to them so much to where he knows exactly how everybody, including Denise, how everybody sounds. And it was incredible to watch him work, even with all of us, or when he would work with us separately, we would all still be in the studio with each girl. And to pull off what we've pulled off, Nobody sounds like the Clark sisters, you know, but they wanted to make sure that they could get the younger Clark sisters sound because, of course, you know, we all grow and uh, they wanted to make sure that they could get the younger sound of the Clark sisters without pulling the Clark sisters in to do their own uh, singing. So it was really, really dope to, to do that. Now, we've also talked about this before, but let's let's discuss this. The genius behind casting Ingenue Ellis as Dr. Maddie Mosclock. First of all, let me say this, Ingenue, I really don't think she gets the credit that she deserves as being such an incredible, consistent actress. I mean, she's given us so many amazing performances over the years on screen, television, film, and she cont she just has such excellence in her delivery. I love her. Absolutely. She's, you know, to watch her work, her artistry is you just use the word. It was definitely impeccable. Like you, you watch different people do their thing, right? Well, to be on the same set with this woman to see how she actually gets what they're needing out, and she knew exactly what it was that she needed to do. Like she even worked down to the teeth to to even the uh, wardrobe and wanted to make sure that she pulled off everything from the glasses to what she would wear, what she would not wear, um, the hair, and uh, even getting out the sound of Dr. Maddie Moss Clark. It was incredible. You know, she even helped us, <clears throat> each one of us. Um, I remember one time when, when it was <laughs> Angela's first day of filming. Well, it was all of our first day of filming, but it was Angela's first day doing a very emotional scene and she was like I cannot get these tears to fall she said because I really I don't want them to help me to cry like they you know they use the fake tears and everything and she didn't want that and next thing we knew Anjanu whispered something into Angela's ear and we still don't know what it was that she whispered as soon as she whispered it, it was like okay she's crying she's crying so we were like already what just happened and they were like you know let's go ahead and get this let's get it now and from there we were like oh yeah she Anjanu knows exactly what she's doing so she helped everybody to make sure that we could get out on film what uh was natural and you know accurate so Christina tell me this what did you learn about the Clark sisters about their legacy, about that family that perhaps you didn't know before? And what can you share with us, of course, without giving away the movie? I don't know how to say it without getting, like, I just had this question. 
I actually don't know how to say it without giving away too much because here's the thing, because we've actually already posted quite a bit online for people to see. And I really don't want to give it away because what I've learned, everything else, a lot of stuff I, I already kind of knew, but some of the stuff that's in the, the movie, like I've said this before, you don't hear about their family business like any of the stuff that goes on within their 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 family and because they are definitely you know private it's not necessarily being secretive but they're private because it's their family affairs and so i really don't know how to say it <laughs> without giving away the movie because it's so much stuff like there's so many layers to it and and all of this i wish i could oh my god well that's okay that's okay we we definitely want to make sure that everybody tunes in on saturday april the 11th make sure that you check your local listing for air times and guys uh i think we will probably still be quarantined by then but just make sure that everybody tunes in because this is this is going to be i think so monumental i don't believe has there ever been a biopic about a gospel group before? No, so this is so incredible. For gospel royalty, like the Clark sisters, to be the first uh, gospel artist to have their story told, it's big. And so that's the reason why it's really important. It behooves all of us to make sure that we tune in because we want to not necessarily be nosy, but we want to make sure that we support our very own, just like people support all of the other artists that their lives, their stories are told on television. This is a huge network. Lifetime is a huge network. So we have to make sure that we support not just Lifetime, but support the Clark sisters in the process because they're really giving away so many different details about their lives and to artists to be able to not make the same mistakes that they've made. You know, everybody in the family has made some type of a mistake at some point in their lives, which of course you'll see it on film. And you just, I, I just, I want everybody to make sure that they tune in because this is really, really big for gospel, for gospel music. So can you tell us how long it'll be? Is it a one night event? Man, I wish it was not. <laughs> so it is, it's a one night event. It's like an hour and 45 minute uh, movie. Of course, it'll probably turn into two hours with the, the commercials and all that good stuff. But it's like an hour and 45 minutes. I really, I thought that the movie should have been to where like, you put all of this stuff out and you get to watch an hour every time it comes on. You know what I'm saying? But because <laughs> they have so many different things going on with their story. It's still not like the half of their story isn't even told in that hour and 45 minutes. But I promise you, it is good. <laughs> so, Christina, um, I have to ask you, have, have you gotten bitten by the acting bug now? Yes, indeed. I have been doing some auditioning. So, you know, get ready to see Christina Bell on film more often than not. And <laughs> I'm, I'm excited about it because it really did help me to go beyond just singing. I thought that, you know, this is the only thing that singing was the only thing that I was supposed to be doing in life. But God surely knows what to do. He brought, <laughs> he brought this acting thing to my face and he was like, yeah, you can do more. So I got some more stuff on my plate and I'm super excited about that. So yeah, acting bug is all beaten off. You know, I got the little welts to prove it. <laughs> all right, Christina, we've mentioned your latest single going that you released, that you debuted to radio. Such a great song. And guys, please make sure that you check that out. That's Going by Christina Bell, available anywhere that you get music. But I want to ask you this. Do you have new music coming soon? I do. I do. I don't know just yet when the, the official release date will be, but I promise you, on uh, if, if, if at all possible, make sure that you go to officialchristina.com. And everything, including my handles for different um, for the different platforms that I'm on, are all on there. But where I'll be after the quarantine is over, <laughs> and also uh, the music and everything will will be posted up there as soon as I get a release date. All right, Christina, thank you so much for being with us today. 
Sure thing. Thank you so much. Thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Inspirational Power Hour. Special thank you to my guest, Christina Bale. Make sure that you check out the Lifetime biopic about the legendary Clark Sisters airing on Saturday, April the 11th. And make sure to check your local listing for specific times. Make sure to follow me online on Instagram and on Twitter. You can follow me at Chandra Wise, C-H-A-N-D-R-A-W-I-S-E. And on Facebook, you can like the Inspirational Power our our fan page. All right, guys, have a fantastic week. Make sure that you stay safe and I will see you next time. It's the